Chara Supply Chain. Highlighting and showcasing solutions for the most complex challenges. Facing the industry in 21st century by a team of subject matter experts and mentors. Broadcasting every week, all year round, we will present the most up-to-date series of podcasts and webinars. Hello and welcome to another episode of Ichara Supply Chain. This is Nur Hadi House. I'm speaking now with uh, Dustin Cochran, uh, Managing Director at Omnia Partners, uh, founder at the CBO Next, and he is based in the U.S. Thanks for joining us, Dustin, and welcome to Vijara Supply Chain. Thanks, Nurhadi. Great being on. I'm really looking forward to our conversation. Mm-hmm. So today's topic is challenge facing uh, the procurement and supply chain leaders. But before we get in, can you please uh, brief a bit about yourself and your professional background? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, I've been in the procurement space for a bit longer than a decade now. It's uh, crazy that it's been that long. Uh, I feel like I'm a newbie still. Um, but I started as a practitioner uh, in both uh, Cardinal Health, you know, where I learned, you know, pretty much the ropes of procurement and supply chain via, you know, a variety of different roles, you know, really focused on negotiation and supplier relationship management. Um, I then spent some time at the University of California as mm-hmm. part of their hospital-focused uh, procurement team uh, at the office of the, of the president. And now I'm at Omnia Partners. Uh, I started on the sourcing side of our business, mm-hmm. so essentially helping to find and source new supplier agreements for our members and renegotiating existing contracts. But uh, recently, I guess, well, four years ago, I, I made a move out of – procurement, uh, you know, from a day-to-day standpoint, where now I essentially consult uh, with procurement leaders across the Western U.S. Uh, So I'm helping them evaluate if joining our membership uh, of the GPO makes sense for them and and really just helping to understand their spend and contracts to help them find some savings opportunities. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So uh, this is my first question. What do you believe to be a key challenge facing your customers and the supply chains in, in the you had? Yeah, it's, um, it's a good question. And it's one where, you know, obviously COVID-19 has impacted that drastically. So a lot of teams are, are really focused on that. So, but largely the challenges that my customers face in this year ahead are pretty much the same as they've been for, you know, the last 10 years. But now you add in COVID-19 uh, and it only amplifies these challenges, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, first challenge I see, and it's pretty much consistent across the companies I work with, is limited bandwidth. And that bandwidth is only getting worse as teams deal with the crisis. So we're already seeing a lot of furloughs um, or, you know, job reductions or just companies not filling uh, open uh, recs for roles that, you know, maybe the person left the organization and they're just not filling that open role any longer. Uh, So bandwidth just continues to get worse. And I don't see that really coming to an end uh, anytime soon. So, you know, I work with a bunch of companies that are tasked with managing massive amounts of indirect spend uh, with limited corporate buy-in uh, to mm-hmm. the value that procurement can bring, uh, and all with an average team of three to four individuals that are truly, you know, sourcing on a day to, you know, I use air quotes here that you can't see, um, on a day-in, day-out basis. So you have, you know, three to four people that are doing it. And now with, uh, you know, potential reductions, that number just goes down. Uh, so that's going to be probably the, the biggest uh, hurdle in the year yeah. ahead. Mm-hmm. And the, then, uh, yeah, go ahead. The, yeah. And, uh, and then what the advice can you offer to the supply chain and procurement leaders to overcome this challenge, uh, uh, Dustin? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a good question. And, you know, first and foremost, I would, suggest to them to accept help. They're going to need help from, you know, a variety of sources to be successful. Um, You know, so when we talk about the struggles with bandwidth, every procurement team I work with is, you know, being tasked to do more with the same or less, Uh, you know, so that's only going to get worse. There's a lot of help available, 
but too many view leveraging outside help as, you know, maybe undermining their work. Uh, you know, maybe it's too costly uh, or, you know, maybe it's just not worth their effort, you know, is what they're thinking. But, you know, I know a lot of great consultants and suppliers out there that maybe they work on a contingency basis and there's some hesitation when it comes to, uh, you know, a gain share type pricing arrangement. But the example I always think of is, you know, if I have to pay someone 30% on a million dollars of cost savings, without their help, I probably wouldn't have had the time to tackle that project. So pay the 300K and book 700K in savings. Mm -hmm. You know, so I just say, you know, take advantage of those opportunities. And, you know, there's a lot of great resources out there for procurement pros to take advantage of now, uh, you know, much more so than when I started in the function. You know, so a podcast like yours, Nurhadi, is great. You know, before this, uh, you know, your listeners might have had to, you know, pay to attend a conference or something like that to hear, you know, folks like uh, you have on. You know, so this is excellent. And, you know, there's also great groups out there like uh, Procurement Foundry. You know, it's a great network uh, to be able to share best practices and get your questions answered. Mm -hmm. And, you know, lastly, and I guess, you know, maybe this is a shameless plug here, but utilize a group purchasing organization if, if mm -hmm. the company isn't doing so today. Um, you know, it's all about leveraging additional volume than what you have on your own to get cost savings, but also to, you know, make your life a little bit easier from a category lifecycle management perspective. Mm -hmm. So take whatever opportunities you can get to help your, you know, help your team out and be more effective. So that's my number one recommendation. Yeah, awesome. So you have explained about the chain links, right? And uh, facing yeah. for the customer and the supply chains. But uh, my next question is that uh, in the recent situation where ascendancy is becoming a major issue for many business, uh, mm -hmm. what are the yep. top priority they have to focus on? They have need to focus on. Yeah, another great question. And I think a lot of procurement leaders are asking themselves the same question right now. How do they prepare for the uncertainty mm -hmm. that lies ahead? Um, you know, I think first we're pretty much on the, maybe on the other side of the initial fire drill, uh, you know, that I would say related to the crisis, you know, where many teams were facing, you know, during March primarily where you had to run out, make sure you were sourcing PPE for your employees, uh, you know, develop uh, a strategy um, for how your employees are going to work remotely. Uh, and now things are starting to pivot where these teams are getting refocused on their core day-to-day -day responsibilities, you know, starting to look a little bit more uh, like it did before the crisis. But here's what I, you know, foresee that I think procurement teams need to prepare for. You know, first and foremost is going to be supplier risk. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen a lot of uh, high-profile bankruptcies as of late, and I think that's just the, you know, the, the start of, uh, you know, what we're going to see, uh, you know, in the months ahead. So really taking inventory of your supplier risk, mm -hmm. uh, take inventory of your contract language, uh, and, you know, prepare your contingency plans. Do it now, um, you know, before it becomes a critical need where you're scrambling and maybe you just don't have the, the bandwidth at that moment to prepare. So, you know, a little bit of preparation now is key. Um, you know, also preparing for the new, you know, the quote unquote new workplace. Yeah. And, you know, many procurement teams are now going to be working remotely uh, for the foreseeable future. You know, and many managers are going to have to adjust to this dynamic. Um, I think it's less about, uh, you know, are your employees doing their job uh, and more about how is your team, you know, being effective? How are they influencing other business units effectively? while they work from home. So I think that's going to be a little mindset change, but uh, something that procurement leaders are going to have to focus on of how they enable their team to be more effective. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it's going to be about closing the profitability gap. Um, you know, there's going to, we're already, uh, you know, likely in a recession uh, and there's going to be financial struggles. Uh, as companies get back, you know, try to get back to profitability. And there's going to be more pressure 
on procurement to, de to deliver cost savings and help get that business back to profitability. Um, and, you know, one of the interesting things is, you know, I happen to work with a lot of tech companies in the Bay Area, uh, and they've been in such high growth mode for, you know, essentially a decade now. And cost savings have maybe never been necessarily a huge priority for them. And it's going to be a shock, you know, to some of those teams as they really have to buckle down and potentially, you know, put in controls that, you know, their employees have never seen. So, you know, some of that is going to be, you know, definitely some pressures on those teams that have never had to face those dynamics internally. But the good news, this is all within the wheelhouse of procurement to be able to, to deliver. And it's a great chance for, you know, these teams to step in, prove their value, and, you know, maybe help them earn the seat at the table, you know, that procurement's always asking for. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. So uh, before we close today's conversation, do you have any final thoughts or key takes away from the discussion, Dustin? No, well, Neuraidi, thank you for your time and the conversation. Uh, you know, this was great, and I hope it helps some folks out there. You know, a key takeaway for me is, you know, reflecting on my time in procurement. Mm -hmm. You know, when there wasn't as many resources at my disposal, you know, like your podcast. So the wealth of knowledge out there at everyone's disposal is just incredible. And kudos to your listeners, uh, you know, for taking advantage of it. So thank you. <laughs> At Vichara Supply Chain, we are committed to driving global perspective to embrace technological adaptation in improving process efficiencies. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share Vichara Supply Chain. And stay tuned for the latest updates. To learn more, visit our website www.vicharasupplychain.com. Thank you for listening to us. We look forward to seeing you at our next episode.